antiderivative as a function. It, well, actually not the antiderivative, the definite integral. Uh, because we do have limits on our integration symbol here. But notice, only one of them is a number. The upper limit is a variable. It is x. And it is purposefully different than the variable in the problem. Notice that it's not the cosine of x dx, it's the cosine of t dt. Um, and it's just so that there's no confusion between the variables there. Okay, so this is a case where, yes, you need to be careful and nitpicky about your choice of variables. I know y'all just like to put x for everything. Get over it. Okay? Um, just move on back. So what they want us to do is they want us to evaluate the function, the pi's, as the integral from 0 to x of cosine of t dt, and they give us uh, five specific values for x. So big F of 0 would be what? Do we even have to do any calculations? No. Because big F of 0 means you plug in 0 for your upper limit. Your lower limit and your upper limit are the same. We know that. That is 0. We've accumulated no area under the curve if we don't move. Okay? If we do not move from where we started from, there's no area. Okay? Nothing to do there. Let's look at pi over 6. Okay, so that's the integral from 0 to pi over 6 of the cosine of t dt. We need to take the antiderivative of that. What is the antiderivative of cosine? Positive sine. We are evaluating that from 0 to pi over 6. Whew, here comes that unit circle again. What is the sine of pi over 6? Why is it not negative? Because the derivative of sine is positive cosine. Mm, sine of pi over 6. Think about it. Pi over 6 is our more shallow angle, so the y value is less, so it's 1 half. The sine of 0? Zero, 0. So this f of pi over 6 is equal to 1 half. Uh, let's keep moving. F of pi over 4. Well, the handy thing about this is we're doing the same operation for the same function. So, actually, we got a little less work this time because we already know what the antiderivative of cosine is. It's sine. All we have to do this time is plug in pi over 4. What's the sine of pi over 4? Thank you. Y'all should know that one. Pi over 4. Square root 2 over 2, sine and cosine. Okay, So that is equal to the square root of 2 over 2. So without writing out all the work, what's the answer going to be for f of pi over 3? Mm -hmm. Square root 3 over 2. Nothing's actually changing here. Okay, Nothing's actually changing. So, last one, f of pi over 2. What would that be? 1. Okay, 1. The only thing that changes is that we're plugging pi over 2 into the sine function, so that is 1. All right, so actually something that would have made our life a little bit easier is instead of plugging in the limits one at a time here, okay, we could have just taken the antiderivative, plugged in the symbol, crunched the numbers, and gone from there. So I'm going to show you, uh, show you that example here in uh, part B. Okay? Instead of anti-differentiating this and uh, plugging the limits 1, 2, 3, and 4, let's anti-differentiate from 0 to x of 3t squared minus 2t plus 4 with respect to t. 
And that gives us what? T cubed minus T squared plus 4T from 0 to X. And if we plug in our upper limit for T, we get X cubed minus X squared plus 4X. What do we get when we plug in 0? Zero. Okay, I'm going to put minus zero here just for the sake of having it there. So that means big F of X is equal to X cubed minus X squared plus 4X. So if we want to know F of 1, all we have to do is plug in 1 into that function. So we've got 1 cubed minus 1 squared, that's 0. 4 times 1 is 4. So f of 1 is 4. f of 2 is 2 cubed minus 2 squared plus 4 times 2. So 8 minus 4 is 4 plus 8 is 12. f of 3. 3 cubed minus 3 squared plus 4 times 3. 3 cubed is 27 minus 3 squared is uh, 27 minus 9 is 18 plus 12, so that's 30. And big F of 4 is 4 cubed minus 4 squared plus 4 times 4, and that's just 64 because the minus 4 squared plus 4 times 4 cancels 4 cubed to 64. Okay? So when you see something like this, when you have a variable for uh, one of your limits, if x is one of your limits, uh, then take the antiderivative, plug in x for your variable, and then subtract what you get when you plug in your lower limit. Now I say that because this isn't always going to be 0. Okay? If that were 1, then we would have needed to subtract uh, 4. Okay, plugging 1, that goes away, 4 times 1 is 4, so we would have to subtract 4 from the end had that been 1 instead of 0 for the lower limit. Okay, uh, and then you can plug in whatever numbers they ask you to plug in. Alright, so a little bit of practice.